All right, here's Easter dinner. Easter dinner. I'm Zachary Fowler and you're watching 87 Days, the complete reenactment of all I did out on History Channel's Alone Show. But as if I did it here in Maine, this is episode 26 and we're doing a catch and cook the Easter Bunny for Easter. But don't worry, for those of you that don't wish to see the gory details, it is going to be YouTube friendly. And for those of you that do wish, there will be a link down below in the description so you can see the cleaning of how to properly clean and dress a rabbit for the Dutch oven. So, let's do it. Let's talk and more cooking. Oh yeah, shelter's looking good. That solar roof there does the job. All right, let's get a fire going and get this uh, bunny dressed out and prepared to cook. Alright, time to get a fire going and then I can get some cooking on as soon as possible. I'm going to have to take and cook this for about, I don't know, four or five hours in the Dutch oven. The Dutch oven is this thing. This thing is cool. If you guys haven't seen these before, this is the Dutch oven and it's basically a giant cast iron crock pot and the trick to a, a coolness about the Dutch oven unlike a regular like cast iron pot is you could put these coals on the lid so it heats from the top and the bottom allowing you to do ah dumplings well I just thought of that just now and that would have been great making some dumplings in with my rabbit I can't believe it oh well next time right and got some veggies in here so we're gonna put the uh, rabbit on a bed bed of vegetables and some bacon in here to cook for a snack while that's cooking on the rock and uh, and throw in there to add a little fat to the soup so yeah it's going to be awesome. All right. Replenished my wood pile. Good dry stuff here, good dry oak. The drier it is, the better it'll burn, the more BTUs and the less smoke you get out of it. And the harder the wood is too. This pine, since it doesn't drop that well in here last time, got kind of smoky. I figure I'll save that for when I fix the fireplace so it drafts better. Got something a little fun for while we're waiting for the uh, bunny rabbit to cook. Some Easter eggs. I'm going to fill them with ash from the fire. We'll take them out with the slingshot and pop them off. And they'll blow up. Be like shooting chocks with a slingshot. All right. Fire time. Oh, kindling breaking time. So we're gonna start the fire with some fat wood today. And fat wood is this. Basically, it's a piece of wood. Now, in Maine, there's not a lot of fat wood. I've already used this once, but see the difference right there? That's a sap impregnated piece of wood. In other states, in other states you can get fat wood that's like the whole branch, the end of how the stick would be fat wood and you'd be able to, you know, maybe that far down, right in there where they join to the tree, the sap accumulates in the wood and you get this resin rich wood that when you shave it up, like we're gonna do now, takes a spark real well. It's great for starting a fire. Rainy weather, it's protected because of the resin so you can in rainy weather shave off some bits, throw a spark on it and whoo, got a fire. So I'll do that right now. The 
the smaller the shavings, the easier the spark they take. I right, got some shavings now. I'm gonna make a couple uh, little fatwood sticks to put on top of the slivers. So as soon as it's lit, it can light something bigger. And then my kindling and my bigger kindling bundle. A little bit of fat wood. And my little slivers of fat wood. Kind of in and around it. I think I'll make something a little different that I haven't made before. Like a little feather stick. Feather stick is just pretty much just like it sounds. Some people have like a make quite an art form of it. But you just cut it, shave it till you get little curls of wood curling up. And those little curls are fairly soft at the end and they catch catch fire well. There you go. There's a feather stick for you. For those of you that are feather stick artists, leave it in the comments below how ugly that is. <laughs> Some people make an art form of it. They make the most beautiful feather sticks. I just want to have my fire so I can cook my bunny. This time we will start the fire with the Wazoo ceramic tinder knife. It's a little one inch knife and a little ferro rod. So this, these go in the, uh, the ball cap that you can get from them. It has a little, the cash cap. You can see it, you can get one in the link below. There we go. Oh, doesn't that just smell delicious? Mmm, the smell of that fat wood. Wow. I could wait for it. I can get my favorite toy out. Alrighty, here he is, little fella. It's all right. Thank you for your life. And there we go, all cleaned up and ready for the pot. I'm gonna take him inside. He's got some hairs that are still on him, so I'm gonna singe those off in the fire and clean them all cleaned up. Set him to the side, do some vegetables, and we'll get him in the pot. All right, got a couple hairs on here, get those off. Just burn those little hairs off of there. There we go, that worked good. All right, so I've singed off the hairs. I'm gonna set him to the side. Up, uh, I'll tuck him right in here. We will be fine right there until we get the uh, vegetables on. Boy, this is gonna be delicious. Oh, am I excited. This is gonna be so good. I'm looking forward to this since I came up with the idea. There's nothing like a, a juicy rabbit in a, in a stew, stewed rabbit. Just the meat just mm, falls off your bone, off the bone. And um, for the boot camp to get on alone, they had us go and uh, we had to dispatch our own rabbit. They didn't feed us for like a day and a half and the rabbits showed up and they're like there's a catch to your first meal that you get to have now that you haven't had any for a while and the catch is you got to dispatch it yourself and what I did out there was um, at the boot camp I took acorns and I uh, triple boiled them after removing them from the shells triple boiled them and mashed them a bit triple boiling removes the tannins so that they're otherwise they're so bitter you can't eat them 
So my what I did was I made a paste by mashing them after they've been triple or five times boiled. I can't remember now. And then I pasted that all over the rabbit. And then I took the rabbit pieces and I pan seared it in my pan. And at the boot camp, they were coming around and filming everybody and they saw everybody else throwing theirs on the fire or on the ashes to do a, an ash cook or on a stick to cook it over the fire or, or trying to smoke it off to the side. And I was like, today on Iron Chef, you know, because knowing I had to win their favor at the boot camp to be one of the people picked. There's 20 people at the boot camp. So, um, today on Iron Chef, we have a fricasseed rabbit here. We're going to pan sear it with an acorn paste. And, and then we're going to, now that it's been pan seared and it's all golden looking and the, the nut bits all crisping up. Now we add some water and we put it on a slow boil for about three to four hours. And sure enough, like three hours later, people are still picking their dry rabbit out of their teeth. And I opened mine up in front of the camera with the chopsticks. And I just pulled off this juicy, just the meat was just falling off the bone. And I was just, I was like, oh, magnifique. And I'm just playing it up for the camera. <laughs> so I got carrots, no potatoes, bacon to add some fat to it, butter, and um, onions, and celery. I'm not, I don't do, try to do a minimal of carbs, uh, doing the ketogenic diet still, back into it heavily. This is gonna make more than enough for me to have uh, quite a few meals out of. My cutting board. Oh, the smell of cooking onions, mm. So basically all I'm going to do is take this pot and fill the bottom of it with vegetables so that the rabbit is cooking on top of a pile of vegetables. Whoops. Need a bigger cutting board. It's going to be delicious. The smell of onion cooking on the fire like that. Oh, it's making me hungry already bit of celery. Oops, that's no way to do it. <laughs> Five second roll. There we go, that's the way to do it. So those of you that know me know that uh, I make light of this whole Easter bunny for Easter. But I know the true meaning of Easter. And that is that Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, It's not the the uh, marshmallow peeps that it is about something eternal. Oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Oh, the smell of fresh vegetables. Man, hard to beat. Parsnips. Woo! Boom. Oh. Oh, those just smell delicious too. Oh man. Neither of these knives, my ultimate hunter that I always carry, or the knife that Fritz made me are kitchen knives. But I think the cold steel, when it comes to vegetable cutting, Ultimate Hunter wins. It's a slightly thinner grind up, I don't know what you would call it. I'm not good with the names and stuff. But towards the back, the thinner a knife is, I think the better it works for kitchen knives. Knifery, knifing. Garlic. Boy, I wish there was a magical way to talk garlic out of it. It's a uh, paper here. What a pain in the neck processing garlic always is. I love garlic. But well, you buy that stuff that comes in a can that, or a jar that's oiled, and it's like that stuff's gross. You know, there's nothing like whoop, fresh garlic. There's nothing more annoying than trying to process fresh garlic. 
There's only one thing more annoying than trying to peel garlic and get it clean. And that's band-aids. Man, trying to get a band-aid out of his wrapper. And of course, you know, your kids, they're like, every scratch they get, they're like, Daddy, I want a band-aid. And then Sparrow says it, and she loves Pepper Pig, so she picks up the Pepper Pig accent, the way I pick up accents sometimes, listening to audiobooks. And she says, Daddy, I need a band-aid. And when this cute little two-year-old says that to you, it's like, what are you supposed to say? But okay, I'll, I'll suffer the, the pain of having to open this miserable band-aid. And sure enough, you get it out and you peel down one side, it won't split open. You peel down one side, all the way around the other. Somehow that thing is still stuck in the middle of two pieces of paper. I think somewhere somebody designed that and they're just sitting there giggling to themselves. Imagining all the people sitting there fussing around with band-aids trying to get those two pieces of paper apart to get that band-aid out. There we go. So I'm pretty much done and ready to throw my rabbit in here. So before I do that, I'm going to throw him on the, on the sticks, just fresh sticks I put on the fire to um, sear it a little bit and kind of lock in the flavor. So I'm just going to roast him right over the flames for a couple minutes here on each side to try to lock it all, lock in those juices. Oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Oh, man. There we go. Seared him to lock in the juices. And now, I'm just gonna get him into the pot. Gonna need a bigger boat. There we go. Nestle them right in there with all the vegetables. Ooh. This is gonna be one juicy rabbit. Let's see, I need to adjust my fire. Boom. Yeehaw. This is gonna be delicious. Oh. All right, I'm gonna go shoot the slingshot. All right, targets, let's head out. I only knocked that one off by trimming the snow underneath them. Almost 100 and 110, I think it's or so, 120 feet back, shooting the uh, Axiom uh, Ocularis from Simple Shot with a, of course, Warrior Pouch. I thought it was warm enough for the uh, Thunder Band here, but it's not, it's a little on the sluggish side. It makes it harder to be accurate, but I'll get them. I got the first one twice before it finally came off the top of there, blew her away. Yeah, put it up again. All right, time to take that yellow one out. It avoided me on the first two rounds. I trimmed off the pillar of snow right below it, fell off. This time it's mine.
bit high. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> All right. Oh, I love shooting slingshots. If you guys haven't gotten one yet, you got to get yourself one. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. I'm going to call it good there and clean it up before I put too much debris around. Well, I can easily find the chunks. Most of them at least. Yeehaw. I think I'm going to cook up some bacon for a snack while I'm waiting. And add some of that to the uh, the rabbit here to try and uh, richen it up in the butter. And I almost forgot I have I have mushrooms with me. You can't have rabbit without mushrooms. Oh man, that's just no good. No good. Let's see what it's looking like. Oh. Isn't that just gorgeous? There we go, set it down in there a little. Cook her for a bit longer, she's soft. She's cooked. But uh, going for tender, good and tender. Some mushrooms in there, bacon, some butter. Oh, if you're really good with a knife, you don't even have to look, you just, just let it happen. Now, there's a trick to uh, cutting food so you don't cut yourself. My friend, uh, a chef friend, showed me you hold the food like so, and you let the knife sit against your knuckles. So it's on your knuckles, and that's a spacer for you. So you don't even have to look. You can just close your eyes, and you still get that even spacing, just moving your fingers back. And the back of the knife is against your knuckles. And then you don't even close your eyes, and you come out with perfect slices every time. Look at that. Butter. And a bit of bacon. And I like my bacon wriggly, you know? Everybody's like, gross. <laughs> I, I like throw my bacon in the pan and I'm like, shh, shh, done. That bacon and that, oh, that rabbit smells so good. I got, I think I'm gonna try a little snack bacon though is, is ready. I'll do a bit of carving and then, and then it will be time for some rabbit. It's like, it's been about three hours. Mmm. Thank you, Lord, for this bacon. Oh, thank you. Thank you, God, for bacon. Mmm. Bacon on a rock over the fire. Man, that is, doesn't get much better than this outside of what I got going on in there, I suppose. Mmm. Oh, look at that. Cooked beautifully. Nice golden -y bacon over the fire. Just right. That's the way I like it, so it's still a little, not crunchy. I do not like my bacon crunchy. I like it raw and wriggling. and wriggling, you keep nasty chips. In fact, this might even be just a teeniest bit overdone. Mm. Well, while I'm waiting, 
Might as well add my bit of story to the wizard staff, the new story pole. You got the lobsters, the sling. You got the lobsters, the slingshot, the snow and the moon for the overnight in the snow. I think this time I will be adding a Easter bunny. <laughs> it's kind of the hunchback of Bunny Dame. You know, it's like all. All right, that'll do. So a bunch of people talked about, said that they wanted me to do a, talk about carving, and so maybe we'll do a, maybe I'll do a spoon and talk about how I do that and stuff. But uh, mainly something to think about is like the mindset of carving and tool use, you know. I always thought it'd be fun to write a book, like, How to Handle Your Tool, but then I, I realized that that's a bad title. Um, or uh, a book about, like, because I'm really good at always making, like, custom tool handles, you know? Uh, so, I was thinking it would be a cool book to talk about how customizing handles so they fit your hand, you know? Like, I, I love making the slingshots, because the... Uh, the more carved and intricate one, intricate ones, they if you make it right and it fits right into your hand, it fits just for you. It's pretty cool. It's important when you're using any tool that you remember that there is, I think of it like this, there's a bite limit. Every, whoops, every tool has a bite limit. If you try to exceed that bite limit, that's when you end up cutting yourself. And so the bite limit is the amount that that tool, in its level of sharpness, is capable of achieving what you wish it to do. So, for instance, if you were to try and use a knife on here to baton wood, you'd be exceeding its bite limit. If you were to use any knife, baton and wood, you're exceeding... No, I'm just kidding. Um... Uh, if you were to try to carve off a piece of wood, a shaving that's bigger than that tool's bite limit is capable of, you're exceeding that and you're at risk of it breaking free, cutting yourself, that's when you're in danger. Or even if you're following that tool's normal bite limit, but you haven't sharpened that tool, you're going to have to work it harder. And when you're working it harder, you're more likely to cut yourself. Especially, I think more people cut themselves on dull stuff than they do necessarily on sharp stuff. Because, you know, if it's sharp and you're using the tool right, then there should be no reason that you're having it slip free and do something drastic like fly across the your workspace and into one of your appendages or your leg or, or whatever it may be. And the key to, to working and carving is control. And remaining within that tool's bite limit. Which means each tool has a certain size stroke that works along with its bite limit. Like you wouldn't take a small knife like this and try to shave a giant peel off of something like this. It's going to shave down and come free, and then you're in wild space, which means you're hurting somebody else or you're possibly hurting yourself. And it's the same thing with every tool, whether it be in a power tool, electric planer, table saw, band saw. If you try to feed something into the table saw too fast, you get a kickback and it throws it out. If you try to run too big of a piece of wood through an electric planer, then it binds up and it seizes and it stops working. The same with every knife and every axe. Trying to do uh, a too big of a tree maybe with a small bush axe and try and chop down a giant tree could, could be dangerous. Or trying to um, limb a tree with an axe that's too heavy for you 
and you're exceeding its bite limit to try and cut off these small branches when you should be using something like you know a small uh, small axe or or something you need to know your tools as you're using them and know what their bite limits are and not exceed those and then and practice with your tools always practice the more you use tools the better you come they get at it the better your result is and the safer you are Here we go, another piece of my story, logged for all, as long as this wood lives. Turned out good. I will, uh, hopefully next time I'm out here I have more time and I can start adding some other things in there. I add some more aspects of the story of my life. It's, uh, it's fun making the the story pole there, the wizard staff, I call it. Um, it's a, it's like a, it's a nice little journal, and it's it's an exploration of, you know, your own self a little bit at times. Oh yeah, she's done. Oh look at that! Oh. It looks so good. It's just falling apart. All right, all right, all right. Got a new, uh, new toy there from uh, Bare Minimum. It is a snap together bowl and or, uh, well, I'm gonna use it as a bowl this time, that's why I said that. But it's a snap together cook pot. The thing is pretty neat. I haven't uh, used it for cooking yet, but I'm going to use it today for a plate. So I can, it can do, as far as I can tell, it can do both. You know, just bring it around, snap it together, like so, and then again with another snap on this side. And you have a bucket slash boiling water slash cooking foldable, a great, um, you know, bug out bag type thing. Super tiny. And I'm gonna use it as a plate today because it's just like, it opens up like that and I can put my food on it. And or when you're done with it, you just fold, fold, close, close, bring it around, snap it. Look at how tiny that thing is. It's just, you know, it's the size of my hand. And I don't know what it is, like a couple quarts or something like that, two or three three-quart bucket or pot. Um, you're not supposed to put it right on the fire. Flames can't get on this material. Some sort of a food grade impregnated canvas it looks like to me. And uh, nifty. So I'm gonna use it as my plate today. Just open it up like that and that way it kinda, it's a huge plate. They sent me a small one too. I probably should have brought that one. But uh, yeehaw. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look. Oh, that smells. We need smell-o-vision. If I win a couple more loans, <laughs> I'll, I'll invent smell-o-vision. I had that idea years ago. I thought that would be so funny. Uh, not just funny, but awesome. You know, where you'd be able to... Uh, I think I've actually mentioned that before. Smell-o-vision. Oh, look at that. Ooh, this works as a plate really well. Uh, another piece of... I need a ladle. Another piece of bacon. Oh, some vegetables go with everything. How do I get the veggies out of there? Should have carved a bigger spoon. Should have carved a bigger spoon. Oh, mushrooms. Yep. Mushrooms. Carrots. Got your carrots. Our rabbit takes up so much of the bowl. Celery. Yep, definitely 
Next time, carve a bigger spoon. Look at that beast. Just. There's the rabbit. Oh, so juicy. Just gorgeous. Oops, I think I just got some rabbit on my camera. <laughs> All right. Say some grace. Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you this Easter Sunday. Remember and think of you. You died on the cross for our sins that we could be free. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeehaw! Oh! I can't remember the last time I ate this good. I say that because I haven't had anything but the little pieces of bacon all day today. Mmm. 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 Oh, those carrots are so sweet. And parsnip. Just so much flavor. I don't even need my knife. The the meat just you just pull on it and it just comes right off. A little bit of mushroom, a little bit of rabbit. Mmm. Oh, I didn't put any seasonings on it. A little bit of my favorite salt, a little real salt. It's not coming out. It's been sitting out here. Let's do it manually. Maybe not. Forgot to put some rice in it. There we go. And you can't live on rabbit alone, probably. Like some people complain, it's like, what's the point of putting all that effort in if you can't live on it alone? Well, you can't live on anything alone. But I bet you, you, you have rabbit and bacon. Yeah. I bet you, though, a little rabbit, a little bacon, and a mushroom. Now that, I bet you could live on. Mmm. That I could definitely live on. Oh, I hope you're sitting down to something good to eat right before this. Because you're going to be some hungry after watching me eat this. I don't see how you couldn't be. This is so good. I'm going to take it off of there so it doesn't just continue to cook away. Cast iron's pretty hot. It'll continue to cook as it is. Alrighty. Alright. Clean off the lid of the Dutch oven. Definitely a win of her meal idea for sure. Mmm. Mmm. All right. Can't even remember the last time I had rabbit. It's been a long time since I left for Patagonia. We had some canned rabbit and rabbits that we raised for meat at the time, and, and the goats. The goat meat is so good. Ah, I love goat meat. And, um, especially canned goat meat. We'd have burrito night with canned goat meat or rabbit. Mmm. Or I'd make this, um, jerked rabbit. If you have rabbits and you haven't tried making jerked rabbit with, like, um, I'm not exactly sure what the recipe was because I wasn't the cook. I was just the eater. <laughs> but the, uh, it had pineapple and stuff. So it had some sweetness to it. And man, was that good. 
That was good. Ah, oh, I am stuffed. That was so good. I have to put the rest of that. Almost finished the leg. Put the rest of that bone back in there. Keep it going after it's gone. Turn it into one more thing of soup. I always try to get the most out of it. I mean, that was a habit I had even before going out to Patagonia. Because we would probably get like a week out of a chicken. You know, you eat the chicken, eat the chicken again, more chicken soup, and then broth and rice in the broth, and then broth it one last time and, you know, drink it for like a little bit of the what's left in it. And then she'd, um, we would cook it down till it was like nothing, you know for that like one last broth or something and uh wow try to use everything as much as possible i'll take the um hide from the rabbit and i will work on that in uh, next week's video and tan that useful 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 try to use everything so wow that was awesome 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 dutch oven is the bomb so cool and it would have been even more fun if I had thought to bring dumplings. Nothing like some dumplings in the top of that and letting it cook it up. Those things are delicious. I haven't had those in like two years. Those were good. And uh, that's pretty much it for me. I'm going to head up out of here next time. I got something really special for you, I'm hoping. To put it together in the next video or the video after that for the 87 Days series. Uh, check out the links below if you've seen stuff that I've been using in these videos. Uh, there's links below that support this channel so you can shop and help this channel out so I can keep affording to make videos and make them better all the time and have bigger adventures. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Fowler out. Maybe just one more piece. Mmm. Uh. Mm, all right. I just absorbed all the flavors of the garlic and the carrots and the... It's so good.